Welcome to the glorious River Wye, just outside Hereford, for a day's barbel fishing. Feels like a reasonable fish. Might actually be a big chub. We've just started the session with the aim of looking at catching these big river fish on a pellet feeder and this looks like a very good start. Chub of about maybe three and a half pounds. Lovely summer fish. A pellet just on the outside of its mouth. Possibly even a bit bigger. Maybe four pounds. There we are. A lovely big summer Y chub. Tune in to see how we get on. One of the most important things when trying to target big fish during the summer is location. The reason I've sat here today is fairly simple. The river's been very low now for five or six weeks and running right through the middle of this pool that I'm sat in is a deep gully. And that gully is running quickly and it's oxygenated and all the big fish that will be within this area will be channeled into this fairly short section of river in order to be in that depth and flow. The oxygenated water is essential for them to survive. Where I'm sat, it's only a few inches deep and on the other side of the bank, again, it's only a few inches deep. The gully running through the middle here is probably only five or six meters wide. And I would anticipate there to be a big volume of chub between the bridge stanchion here and the rapids at the bottom of the pool. All the water is just pushing down over those rapids and all the natural food that's coming round the bend above me is just coming through the pool here and going down into that gully and it's an obvious place for these big fish to live. During the winter months, location isn't quite so key. The fish will move out of these gullies and be found all over the river. But during the summer, you have to go to the fish. They won't come to you. So when you're looking on these rivers, try to find deepish oxygenated water and you'll never be too far away from the fish. Now that you've found your swim and you're settled and ready for your day's fishing, you need to decide how to approach these low, clear summer rivers. Now, unlike the winter, where often the best way to fish for big fish on rivers is with a ground bait feeder and lots of particles, in the summer it's often better to use a traditional maggot feeder with smaller particles. So today I'm using a small 30 gram maggot feeder to start the session and in this maggot feeder I'm putting 3 and 4 mil cheesy garlic halibut pellets and hemp, roughly mixed in equal parts. Now when you put the hemp into the pellets, it's important to make sure that the hemp isn't covered in liquid so that the pellets become too damp and they just go into the feeder slightly dampened off so that they go down to the bottom and then slowly leach out of the feeder and into the gravel bottom that we're fishing on today. And the reason to start on a small feeder is as I mentioned when we're looking at the swim here, I know the fish were already in this channel so what we're looking to do is actually just bring them to us and home in on the bait. We're not looking to create a huge carpet of feed in a big area of river and hoping to draw fish from a wider area. We already know the fish are here, so it's a softly, softly approach in the summer. You don't need to go gung-ho and pile lots and lots of bait at them. As the session goes on, what I would expect to do is to change from the maggot feeder onto a straight lead. Now the straight lead is great because what it allows you to do is actually drop into different areas of this gully. You may go upstream, quite often barbel will actually sit above your bait, in some ways, I think they almost guard it to start feeding in the evening. They sit above it and then at night they drop down onto the little bed of bait that's there and start to eat it. And with a straight lead, it enables you to drop around your peg without putting any amount of bait elsewhere. So you're still fishing in the same location with your maggot feeder, but the lead allows you to move around and perhaps track any fish that have spooked off that little bed of bait. 
One thing that is worth mentioning during the summer, it's best to fish a long hook length. The hook length I've got on today is around about three and a half foot. There's no point fishing short hook lengths. The fish won't come right up to the feeder. They're a little bit wary and that longer hook length, a little bit of natural movement in the hook bait quite often just induces a bite. Another thing that's absolutely crucial, today the water through the middle of this channel is actually pushing through quite hard and you have to have the rod elevated to keep that line out of the water and prevent the toe of the water pushing through. It means you can actually hold bottom with less weight. We've been able to hold today with just 30 grams by dropping the feeder in, paying a bow of six, and when I say a bow of six, I mean that I open the bail arm and pull the line from the reel to the top ring six times, and that creates the bow in the line and gives you those beautiful drop back bites when a big fish picks up the bait. It's really, really important to always fish with that bow of line. If you fish direct, more often than not, you need more weight to hold bottom, and quite often when you get a big fish take, it will actually crack your hook length off on the bite which is the last thing you want when you've been patient and waited a long time for a bite. But there are really crucial tips when you're looking to approach a swim like this during the summer is to start softly with that maggot feeder and always have in the back of your mind that a straight lead dropped around the peg in different locations will catch you a few fish as the session goes on. While we're discussing the tactics, it's worth looking at the equipment that we're using today. Now obviously big fish in rivers like barbel and chub are hard fighting and if you look at the peg that I'm faced with today, there's all the debris from past winter floods. There's a big tree propped up against the stanchion of the bridge here. There's a tree that's fallen in the water. There's all kinds of snags. So you need equipment that's not going to let you down. So I've got a 13 foot medium heavy feeder rod with a two ounce tip in it, a big powerful reel, the Black Viper, and the line is 10 pounds. It's an old fashioned monofilament line, just a traditional feeder mono will do. There's no point using these new high-tech lines for this style of fishing. It just needs to be good and robust, and it can't let you down mid-battle with a barbel or chub. Running down to the hook length, it's 019, which in old money breaks at about eight, eight and a half pounds. And that's set between two feeder stops, so that if the fish snags you, it can break free away from the feeder. So it's a nice, safe rig, which is important when you're fishing on natural venues for big fish. Hook-wise, a size 10 or 12, and then with a simple bait band in a loop below that to attach either a 6, 8 or 10 mil pellet below the lead or feeder. The same setup can be used for later in the session when you choose to attach a lead just at the start when you're fishing a feeder. Let's have a look at the bait for today's session. Now during the summer months our rivers tend to run very low and clear and there's often a misconception with barbel and chub that you need big baits. I often find in the summer that smaller baits, smaller pellets and hemp are best to get the fish into the peg and feed in. Now for today's session I've got a mixture of three and four mil cheesy garlic halibut pellets and hemp in the feeder. These small baits trickle out of the feeder and go in amongst all the gravel in the area that you're fishing and the barbel and chub start searching for them. And over the top of these baits I'll then have a selection of hook baits. Firstly a six mil cheesy garlic pellet Again, a small hook bait when you consider that barbel are big fish, but you often find these small pellets pick out the fish far quicker than a big pellet that the fish become suspicious of. And then as an alternative, I'll use the pelletos in eight mil or a spicy sausage mini oozing pellet. Now these hook baits are just there for when the swim goes a little bit quiet and you perhaps want to try an alternative bait just to pick off those fish towards the end of the session when it might be getting a little bit tricky. Now, one thing that I've started doing recently to just give the bait that little bit of extra oomph is giving them a squirt of the hemp and cheese, cheesy garlic oil. Now this just goes over the pellets and when they're coming out of the feeder, it creates a slick going down the peg and I'm sure that it just helps to suck those extra few fish into your swim and get you a few more bites on tricky days. Give it a try, it's definitely worth it. Well, there's another lovely chub. Let's just have a little look at where we're fishing and how we're getting on. So the session started quite nicely, fishing a little bit higher up this bridge pool, but for some reason today, this slightly deeper part of the peg here is absolutely full of dace. And although they're lovely to catch, they're not actually the fish that we've come here for. And we've actually started a new swim a little bit further down this gully, heading towards this quicker, rapid section of water. 
Now, whether it's to do with the oxygenated water that that's offering, but there are a lot more barbel and chub down there than in the top part of the swim here. Now that we've switched down there, we've caught four or five small barbel and lots of chub in very quick succession. Some nice chub as well. The bites tend to come quite quickly, as already indications on the tip there now, after we've cast out. Still fishing the swim feeder at the moment, packed with that hemp and cheesy garlic pellet mix. However, I think the amount of bait that we're putting in now is starting to attract a few too many smaller fish. And it may be that we have to look at fishing a straight lead shortly over the same line to try and catch some slightly bigger fish. And here's another small chub on that swim feeder. A lovely fish though. Maybe 10 ounces or so. Beautiful condition. Let's have another cast and see if we can get another. Hook bait wise, varied today, but at the moment the best hook bait has been an 8 mil pellet soaked in the cheesy garlic hemp oil. Just pay that little bow out. I think the cheesy garlic hemp oil is just helping to create this little bit of a slick below the hook bait and when we've got the smaller pellets and hemp coming out the back of the feeder that little scent and oily slick that's coming out the back is just helping the fish really home in on the bait and pick it out. It's also got the same flavour as the pellets we're feeding but it's just fractionally larger hook bait to stand out on the bottom and just get you those bites a little bit quicker than the smaller pellets today. There's indications all the time out there. The feeder's only really just into position now with the bait coming out the back. I imagine the fish are now moving up into the peg and eating all those free offerings. And it's only usually a matter of time before you get a bite. There's a big indication then. I would imagine due to the clarity of the water that the fish will start to spook a little bit and we'll end up catching a smaller stamp of fish. And that's usually the time then to switch to the straight lead that we discussed earlier. And I'll just start to drop that in different parts of the peg and just try to locate where the, the bigger fish, usually the barbel, have moved to. It's usually to get away from the commotion and just find a nice quiet spot to sit. But it doesn't mean that you can't catch them. It's a great way of just picking them off later in the session. And that's certainly something that's on my mind at the moment. Something else that's been good today is to actually loose feed six mil cheesy garlic pellets over the top of the same line. And I think they're just helping to draw up some of these bigger fish that are sat elsewhere in the swim and actually home them in over the area that we're fishing. There's a lot of fish in the Y and it's not somewhere that responds to feeding no bait. Although we're taking a fairly cautious approach it's still important to make sure that there is bait falling through the water and in the area that you're trying to fish because all the time you're, you're trying to draw the fish from lower down in this gully up to the area that you're actually fishing. Just put another pellet in the, uh, in the band. There we are. Load the feeder up. Same mix. Still only a small feeder. But it's plenty enough bait when you're casting regularly and just drop that feeder back into the lower part of the gully here. It's just hit the bottom there, pay that bow of line out and then put the rod into position. Now on this cast I'm just going to put this loose feed pellet. Oh there's a fish on already, look at that. It can be so quick when these fish are in the peg. A barbel this time. Looks like a good fish. Didn't even have time to fire the pellets out. 
They really do love these cheesy garlic pellets. Now there's a lot of snags in this peg. And if there's one thing about playing big fish on a river, it doesn't pay to play them too delicately because they certainly know where the snags are. We've got good robust tackle on. It's generally best to keep the rod quite high and make sure that you apply the pressure. If you let the barbel dictate the fight, you'll generally find yourself in a snag. We're just bringing it up the peg now. Barbel are notorious for swimming upstream. It's generally a good sign if you've uh, got a barbel on, it'll start to swim upstream. It's a telltale sign that it's not a big chub. And caught this quite a long way down the peg, so it's a good scrap to get it up to the net. Oh, just caught a glimpse of it there, a nice barbel. And one of the best ways to play a barbel is to actually try to draw it upstream of where you sat. and then lower it down into the net. In these faster pegs, if you bring the barbel up below you, it's very, very difficult to net it because the strength of the current is constantly pushing the fish away from you. So you're trying to then drag it up to the net. Whereas if you can actually just gradually pull the fish upstream, like this, as we're doing now, before you then lift its head, you can actually drop it downstream and into the net. So there's the fish, down it comes. And into the net. There we have it, a lovely wide barbel. Probably five pounds in winter condition, four and a half pounds in the middle of summer. It really doesn't get much better than that, pure, why fighting machine? Oh, there we are. Feels like the final barbel of the day. Wonderful bite. Classic drop back. Feels like another reasonable fish. You be very careful, there's a big snag out there. And they know exactly where it is. This one seems to have just got behind it. Good trick with big fish, they do just snag you up. It's just to open the bail arm on your reel and pay out some line. Sometimes you find with big fish on rivers that they think that they've won the battle, that they've been let go. If you just keep paying it out, Give it long enough to think that there's no tension. And then just carefully tighten back up. Sometimes you'll find that the fish will swim out of the snag. Just as this one has. So that fish is well and truly snagged. But by just releasing the tension, 
it's assumed that it's won the battle and it's swum out of the snag and the fight's still on. We've had a brilliant session starting on the feeder, catching some small chub and barbel. And as the session's gone on, we've had to drop down the peg into the more oxygenated water in the lower part of the swim. And we've actually ended up, as we thought, on the lead to catch these final few fish. But the last few fish we've caught have been really nice fish. This feels like another perhaps four or five pound barbel. And just like the start, they're falling to a mixture of hook baits, but the best without a shadow of a doubt has been the eight mil pellet with the cheesy garlic oil. The interesting thing with that oil is over the course of the day, just keep applying a little bit more. It's been a warm day, so the pellets do dry out a little bit, but they keep soaking that oil and flavor in. And these barbel today have really loved them. They've fed well considering the conditions. There they are, lovely barbel. Again, as before, just try to draw it up the peg. There's no point rushing for these big river fish. We've already done the difficult part. We've managed to free the fish from the snag. And now all we've got to do is glide it upstream. There we are, he's upstream. And now lift him up and draw it towards the net. There we are. A wonderful way to end the session on the River Y. Another barbel. Probably four pounds, a five pound fish in the winter. Lovely. I hope to see you on the bank soon.